You know, um, as we look forward into technologies and things, I think uh, I also take a, a pride in actually looking back. This is a very uh, special year for Mitel. It's uh, gonna be our 45th birthday as a company. 45 years as a technology company in the communication space doesn't happen very often. There aren't many companies who have been able to navigate all the twists and the turns that have happened in our communications and collaboration uh, industry. Um, you know, today we're very fortunate uh, to have the man who started it all for Mitel. Please join me in welcoming the co-founder and chairman of Mitel to the stage, Sir Terry Matthews. <laughs> Please, Sir Terry Matthews. Thank you. What a journey it's been. Oh, oh, quite a journey. 45 years, that's quite some time. Yeah, a lot of things have happened in 45 years. I guarantee you that, but I gotta ask you one question to start off. Yeah. One question, okay. So, there's a rumor. Did it really begin with $4,000 <laughs> and an electric lawnmower. <laughs> well, actually, Richie, it was $3,500 that I borrowed. I mean, as a young person with a couple of kids, I mean, that's, it doesn't sound much money, but to start a company up with almost nothing, you better learn something to grow a company like this. And uh, I learned some unbelievable lessons. Mike thought that there was an opportunity to sell silent lawnmowers. This is when you couldn't land Concord in New York because of the noise. All over North America, they were building houses in rows, with all with a little garden. Sears thought it was a fabulous idea, cordless electric lawnmower. So I used some of the money to bring in, ready for the spring market for, uh, for Sears, these silent lawnmowers. They thought it was a great idea. I mean, I suppose, Thinking back, I could have been here as the king of lawnmowers. I mean, it just yeah. didn't work out. So I learned an incredibly important lesson. Timing, timing in life is almost everything. The shipment got lost. It, they thought it had originally fallen overboard in a storm on the boat coming from Europe. But it didn't. It's just all the shipping papers got lost. It was eventually delivered, six of these lawnmowers, and you can see there's a picture of one there. They got delivered at the end of October. Now, <laughs> anybody that's living in North America, in particular in Ottawa, you can't give away lawnmowers. In fact, the Sears people said, does it have a snowblower attachment? <laughs> so, so I learned an incredibly important thing in life. Timing's almost everything. You have to get your timing right whether it's a new product, a new market. And I mean, to some extent, this is an appropriate thing to talk about. You must get your timing right on cloud. So it did start with a lawnmower. It did start with a lawnmower. <laughs> and because they weren't delivered, Mike and I literally worked around the clock for six months and delivered our first electronic product. Pop, 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 touch tone. Everybody wanted touch tone receivers. These receivers were $1,500 each. We designed one on a single circuit card. Now remember, we had almost no money, but it was a time when we could bring in new grads. The company, I'll never forget, I mean, we assigned 400 shares at a dollar each. How do you bring people in if you've got no money? So this was another massive lesson for me. 
in creating successful companies. We gave them shares. And then the chemistry totally changes. This is not a, an environment that you work, you get paid. Then it's netted out. You work, you got paid. Someone else offers you more money, you're gone. But what if you have ownership? That changes a lot. The chemistry is totally different. People worked seven days a week around the clock to get these, these first products out. Now, with such a short time scale and such a short number of people, small number of people, there's another thing that I learned in, 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 like incredibly important. Listen to customers. If you listen to customers about what they want, and you build what they said they want, surprise, surprise, they buy it. They buy it. So <laughs> I love this formula. Ownership to drive the chemistry and the hard work ethic. Listen to clients, deliver what they say they want. And then finally, uh, timing. If your timing's right, man, does it ever work out well. You know, one of the things that we talked about uh, tonight was how fast technology is moving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, what surprised you or what do you observe over the last five years in terms of the technology sector or major things that have happened uh, over the last five years? Actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back. You go back. Remember those tone receivers? Yep. One of the first clients was Maritime Tell and Tell. You'll say, who the hell's that? This was a, this was a small telephone company in, uh, in Nova Scotia. And the chief engineer, Rich, had this sign on the wall. It's a little rectangular sign. And the more I think about it, this is also an appropriate thing I learned. And I keep pushing this into everything I do. So this sign said, think ahead. The sign said, think ahead. But the letters were too big. So think took up three quarters of the sign. And a head had to be written up in language up the side of the site. Think ahead. And almost everything I do, if I build a, a building or I start a new company up, I say, what if it's successful? The worst thing is you've got something successful, but you, you boxed yourself in. Mm -hmm. So always think ahead. If it's good, what do you do next? What's next? That's I an like incredibly that. important thing in life, is if you build something successful, like what's next? So I always, always go down these tracks. They sound very simple. I mean, what could be simpler? Ownership drives a relationship where the chemistry is hard work ethic. Mm -hmm. Listen to the client. You build what they say they want, and they actually buy it. And finally, make sure your timing's right. Timing's almost everything. And don't box yourself in. Think next, think ahead. So let, let, me, let me pull that string. Okay. So if you think about the next five years in technology. Right. My tell will be 50. Yep. So you start up a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. 150 in total. Think about that, 150. No bankruptcies. That's good. We don't like bankrupts. No, I hate bankruptcies. <laughs> 150 companies. So what? Uh, uh, but how about this for a lesson? Remember those 400 chairs at one dollar each? Yep. And remember those young kids that lived at home with their parents and worked seven days a week for the first product? Mm -hmm. Every one dollar share, 10 years later, was over two and a half million. Nobody complained about not being paid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can complain either. So, you know, if you think about the next five years and you think about, hey, where you're making investments and, mm -hmm. and you know, what technology is going to bring. So what's your view of that? Well, we both know the speed going to the cloud and it's complicated. I mean, this upsets people who have been in business for years and years and mm -hmm. years. How do you grab hold of this next thing? Now, fortunately, in our case at Mitel, like we have these, like, what is it? There's about 70 million endpoints. Yep. So the, the visibility of what customers want is, is just an incredibly important thing. Build what they want. And it, is, it isn't an easy transformation. In five years' time, I, I mean, the bulk of people will be in the cloud. No question about it. And what kind of ugly things? I mean, cybersecurity's gone right through the roof in terms of the need for cybersecurity. 
Look at the recent laws on GDPR, protection of, uh, of private information. I mean, this is completely rough on the whole industry. GDPR, banks, hotels, I mean, every business collecting information. And you better know what you're doing with that information. You fall afoul of the law. It's 20% of global revenues. Is it 20% of global revenues? I think that's right. That's a penalty, uh, up to. Oh, good God. I mean, it's the incredible thing. So you have to do it. These are frighteningly big changes. AI, I mean, some of the things that you mentioned here, I, I think you, it, one of the things that I think you could have discussed, we both know that you won the business, I would even say, like a next generation mouse trap. I found that really, really funny. I mean, here's a company that puts rat traps and mice, mouse traps down for restaurants and, and hotels and so on. And they used to send people around whether there was a rodent caught or not. And what did the IoT stuff do? You don't go if there's nothing in it. So it cut their costs. They were able to lower their prices. The growth of the company is beyond belief. I mean, a better mouse trap, I would never I thought we'd have done a better mousetrap like that. So for the people in the audience, one of our customers uh, in the North American market used this IoT idea to say, hey, I'm in the rodent business. <laughs> That's what I do. I put these traps around restaurants, and rodents come into them, but I've got a problem. i got two problems. One problem was getting people who wanted to drive around in a van with a bunch of dead rodents in the back. That was a problem. The second problem was I got to check all the traps because I don't know whether there's somebody in there or not. So what one of our innovative customers with a partner did is said, hey, we'll just put a sensor in there. Sensors have two or three year batteries. The rodent comes in, right. boom, we know the trap's got somebody in it. 40%. Yeah, they number. saved. Big number. Think about the cost, the materials, the drivers to get vans around. And there were two things to it. Now. They could cover 40% more customers, 40% more customers, or they'd cut the cost by 40%. IoT is real. Oh, man. And it's happening. That, that, that is an, I mean, for me, that's an unbelievable example. Down at the level of a mouse trap. Come on. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> so, you know, if you, if you think about it, one thing that I've noticed, you have a lot of small companies who, what I say, punch above their weight. Yeah. They have the ability to um, work and with, with really large companies. So, yeah. so tell me a little bit about that. Well, I, you know, you and I worked together in creating young companies with young people. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's good to bring young people along. Uh, so where are we? We're in Victoria in Canada. We're in the UK. We're in Istanbul. We're in Lille, France. Mm -hmm. The experience is really good. I can't speak enough for the kind of training and pulling people on to be successful. I mean, in my case, you know, the first company was Mitel, did incredibly well. I mean, I can go back to this day and remember everything. Like $240,000 in the first six months, it jumped to 1.3 million in the second year, 5.4 million in the third year, then 11.2, then 22.1. How do I know that? I lived it. Mm -hmm. And getting young people enthusiastic, learning about business, I mean, this is a great pleasure to do that. Now here's Mitel getting into this next generation. Timing, in my view, is right on. You have to get your timing right. And, I, and, and it's a little painful, but you have to do it. And boom, the company's committed to do it. And what are we doing? We have this incredible range, I would say incredible range of partners to get to clients. I mean, these are our channel partners. Mm -hmm. And now we are building an incredible, I think, surround sound of companies that help to get into each one of these verticals. And uh, uh, some of the shockers to me, I mean, it is a little bit of a shock. You imagine a company that specializes in auto detailing, not retailing. I mean, we are big in retailing anyway. Auto detailing, who would have thought a narrow, narrow vertical like that could suddenly be successful? And the truth of the matter is there are so many narrow verticals. I mean, mouse traps. you know, I mean, to go into an audience and say, by the way, we're big in mouse traps. Like, 
<laughs> That's a very narrow, very narrow little vertical. But the truth is, there are thousands of verticals. They are not all big like schools and hospitals and so on. But to get those verticals right with innovative little partner companies, oh, that creates a great ecosystem. And I just want to say you're doing a hell of a job doing that. <laughs> well, you know, I think that uh, Terry makes a really good point. And it goes back to kind of what we've seen here today, that, you know, there are a thousand different use case and verticals. A company like Mitel can't cover them all. But what we can do is be open so that you can cover the ones that your customers need. Yep. So this ecosystem, using small companies to add, is something that we're very passionate about. We've always had an open architecture mindset. And as we move to the cloud, we have a path to the cloud, which is key for all customers. We'll leave, leave none behind. Yeah. Uh, that's what we think. You know, uh, as we start to wrap up here, um, what wisdom? If you, if you could leave something, you've obviously been very successful. You've started a ton of companies. Um, what advice could you leave this audience? Make sure you partner, get your timing right, be prepared to share, and think ahead. My tell next. My tell next. That's what we have today. Well, thank you very much, Terry. Thank you. I really appreciate you. My pleasure. Thank you.